This is episode number three of Sports Table Talk, hosted by Wetson. On this episode, we'll be discussing first round NBA playoff predictions. And please keep in mind that this was recorded right before the beginning of the NBA playoffs, so you'll get to see who was right and who was wrong. Enjoy the show. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Sports Table Talk. I'm your host, Wetson, and thank you for joining me. Uh, on today's episode, we have Steve. And we have Quan. Thank you guys for joining me. And today we're discussing the NBA playoffs. It's basically Christmas for me. Because I I wait all year round for May and June because those are my favorite time of year. It's the equivalent of December and January in football for me. So those are those are my favorite time of year. And now it's here even with the weird, interesting thing going on with COVID and all the stuff that's happening. So thank you guys for joining me today. So we're talking NBA playoffs. Before we get to the playoffs, this play-in tournament, how do you guys feel about that in, you know, in general? Like, you know, you get the seeds 7, 8, 9, and 10 battling for the last two spots. How do you guys feel about that? Steve, you want to start? Yeah, yeah I'm- I mean, honestly, I think for the fans, it's amazing because you're getting great drama, you know, before the playoffs even start. Like last night's game versus the Lakers and the Warriors, I feel like was great basketball. Like just seeing those teams battle each other to get that seven seed. I feel like that was great Um, for the players. I can understand. It's like, you know, you've played a whole season to get like a seventh or an eighth seed and to have to battle for it after all of that still is kind of annoying. But for the fans and for the NBA, I think it's fantastic. I think it's here to stay. I think it's a reason to get people excited before the playoffs even start. So, so I'm a fan. Yeah, I'm, I'm with Steve on this one. Um, this is what Adam Silver has been building to for the, since he became a, the, the commissioner. He's been saying he want to do it like soccer, do you know, in league, you know, in season leagues, in season tournaments, and keep it this way. Last night, that was one of the better games I've seen all season, and just because you have something to fight for. You have something to, you know, to play for. Now, we're going to see tonight if the Wizards think the bed. But <laughs> but it, I feel like it's it's great. And the NBA lost so much money last year. They needed to add something. They needed some more incentive for going towards the playoffs this year. I, I agree with both of you. Um, although last night, okay, disclaimer, I'm a Lakers fan. Oh, I've been a Lakers fan for, you know, most of my life, like maybe the last 25 years or so. So last night it was great basketball. However, I did not like the fact that it came down to like <laughs> I mean, as as a fan, again, we came from what being number number one, number two, um, in the Western Conference. LeBron went down, AD was out. All mm-hmm. of a sudden, now we're battling to stay in the playoffs. My heart was just like, listen, I know Steph Curry's a monster, but man, I need you to slow down a little bit, have a bad game. <laughs> and last night he decided against that. So, but yeah, like, like, it was definitely great. And now for tonight's play and tour- no, tonight's game, Wizards and Pacers, who do you guys got? Sorry to interrupt. Just wanted to remind you, if you haven't done so already, to please subscribe to this channel and also hit the bell notification so you could be notified of future episodes. Also, make sure you like this video, comment your thoughts below, and share this video with your friends and family. Thank you so much. Now back to the episode. Damn, that's a tough one. I've I've been I've been live picking all the all the games so far. I went 0 for two uh, on the first night, two for two last night. Honestly, my my heart wants to say the Wizards, but my head is leaning towards the Pacers. I think even though Levert was called out at the end, which really threw me off on them because I did pick the Hornets to beat them in the first game. Um, because of that, Levert being out was a big deal for them. Levert was a really good scorer and secondary playmaker for that team. Uh, but they did get a big boost when Brogdon came back. Mm-hmm. I think that, you know, Sabonis right now is going to be a big problem for the Wizards to stop. And I think he's a difference maker in the game. Right. I, I'm going, I'm going Indiana. Uh, I'm like, you know, my heart wanted to say the Wizards. I think Bradley Bill hamstring is going to, you know, kind of, it, it's not going the way that I thought it would have went. Him, him having a hamstring issue is going to be a problem. Russell Westbrook might shoot them out of the game because he has a history of doing that. Also, uh, <laughs> Malcolm Brogdon is the X factor to me. 
I feel Malcolm Brogdon, Mr. 50-40-90, one of the most unsung 50-40-90 guys we ever had in the NBA, you know, rookie of the year. I think he is going to be the deciding factor of this win. And the, those side characters they have, like, you know, the Doug McDermott. What's the other kid that was that hit like – had like 27 points the other night, number 12? Uh, McConnell? Think. Not McConnell. Well, TJ is good, though. TJ is really good. It's uh, a Bursette. Bursette. Yeah. Oh, he, he was, was a well, he was really good lately at the end of the season when everybody right. was out. He was beasting. Mm -hmm. So he's taking that, you know, what we losing from Levert standpoint and using, you know, you get his check basically because you know you're gonna get paid if he keeps this up. So yeah. I'm going Indiana. You know, um, I want to choose Wizards because I like Westbrook, and I know he gets so much hate and there's so much you know to go there. But that's the last episode. We had a whole episode on him. We discussed that for God knows how long. And I watched. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. I, I, again, I like Westbrook and I want to go for Wizards. But like Steve said, you know, my, you know, my heart is saying Wizards, but my head is saying Indiana. I feel like Indiana is more complete. And Indiana, um, they play, they, they're a little bit more uh, together. Wizards, I feel like on any given night, they're still trying to figure out their identity. When, I, when Bradley Bill is not controlling, you know, he's not like leading the scoring. And Russell Westbrook is not, you know, having a monster game. So I feel like they're still having, you know, they still struggle to find, a, you know, like a, maybe like a third guy or a consistent guy besides those two to do some things. So I feel like because of that, I'm going to go with Indiana. But, yeah, Westbrook, man, some days he, again, sometimes he'll give you, you know, you know, absolute perfect game where he's just, he does everything he needs to. In other games, like the other night, he'll shoot you out of the game because, first of all, I hate those long two-pointers he takes. Like, you just step inside the line to take a long two. It's like, bro, just one step <laughs> back. But if you're going to miss, you know, miss a three. That way, at least I know, you know, if you made it, it would have been better off. But so. <laughs> he, take Kevin, he take Kevin Garnett's favorite shot all the time, but it's not 2005. That's the problem. <laughs> exactly. Now we have guys pulling from 35 feet out on a <laughs> regular basis. So, yep. you know, catch up. Right. Him shooting, you know, shooting his team out of the game is always a problem for me. But, yeah, I'm going to go with Indiana on this one. Now, for the interesting things, after that, we're talking, let's talk about the brackets. Let's talk about, you know, um, let's start in the, in, let's start in the Eastern Conference. Your predictions. Uh, let's, you know, uh, we're going to start, you know, with Steve, your predictions. Um, first matchup, we got number one seed. Well, you know, because we don't know who they're playing yet, let's start with um, number two. Nets is going against Nets and Celtics. Who you got? How many games? Nets, Nets win that in five. I think the Celtics will get one victory in there just because, you know, you know, Tatum is that good that one night he'll be able to pull it out. But that's that's an easy one. Nets are going to manhandle him. Quan, what do you got? Nets, I got Nets in five as well. Um, I love Jason Tatum. I think Marcus Smart going to have a, a good three-point shooting game because he's another one that can shoot you in the game. And shoot you out that like <laughs> I call I call that Jake DeLome syndrome. <laughs> if you know football, that Jake DeLome syndrome. But yeah, I got number five. Jason Tatum gonna have one big game. Everything gonna click for them in Boston Garden, like game three or game four. And then that's that's nice of you guys because I got I got Nets in a sweep because Ooh. I mean I'm looking at again. I feel like if they had Jalen Brown, I would have had the, it would have been a better series. I would have given them you know Nets you know Nets in five Nets in maybe six. If those, you know, if Jalen Brown and Tatum have a good game at the same time, mm -hmm. it, you know, and again, the Nets are not the greatest defensive team. And I'm saying that I'm, giving, I'm, I'm being generous. They don't play defense. But mm -hmm. when you could score 140 a game, who needs defense? But, yeah, so because they don't have Jalen Brown, I got the Nets sweeping in four. So that's, you know, that's my predictions. But, I mean, again, I'm thinking, again, between James Harden, KD, and Kyrie, and even the guys like Joe Harrison, once these guys start, you know, start gelling a little bit more, I, you know, I, I, I think I, I think I'm gonna go with you know Nets and four, but you know, um, let's go Knicks and Hawks. Oof. I, I'm guessing you, one of you two, one of you two, one of you two, or both of you are Knicks fans. Yeah. Well, I, I, I'll go first, Steve, just just to get this out of the way. I despise the Knicks. Oh, and I despise the Lakers. So both of y'all hate me at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> God damn. These, these are two of your team. Huh? I don't the funny thing is, I don't have a favorite basketball team. Okay. 
I'm from South Carolina, so we don't have a basketball team, so I never was loyal to anybody. Charlotte is the closest, but who wants to support the Hornets? Anyway. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Anyway. I got, right. I got the New York Knicks beating the Hawks in six games. Okay. And Steve, let's go, let's go with your head, not your heart. As a Knicks fan. Listen, 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 listen. There's no way you can get rid of my heart in any Knicks conversation. <laughs> it's all heart, no head, all the way. Knicks are winning in six. I'm gonna say six. I was gonna say like five, but you know what? That's a little too crazy. So I'll keep it at six. I think we do a great job. I think that we might have a change in the starting lineup, maybe either game one, game two, where they take Alfred Payton out, and maybe you might see a Frank Nilakina or um, a Derrick Rose starting. Um, but I don't think that the Knicks are going to keep the same starting lineup during this this playoff run. I think they do make a switch there. I, I think I think they need Derrick Rose off the bench because I think off the bench he gives them that good spark that they need. Yeah. And again, like... I'm no Knicks fan. In fact, my, my friends will say, we'll, we'll all tell you that, you know, I hate the Knicks more and they'll be telling me to move out of New York for the longest because I don't like the Knicks. <laughs> but I'm still here. I'm not going anywhere and I'm going to hate the Knicks <laughs> from right here. And best believe, if the Knicks ever win a championship, I'm going to be at the parade because I pay enough <laughs> taxes that, you know, I deserve to get, I deserve a, a party. So, you know. <laughs> but um, Knicks and Hawks, I got the Hawks and Six. Mm. I got the Hawks in six because I feel like you can't go to the parade, bro. Uh, yes, I can because again, uh, taxes. <laughs> that would a pick like that, bro. <laughs> again, my taxes. That's what I'm gonna go by. I don't like the Knicks. I don't want to be. I don't want to be surrounded by Knicks fan. But if they have a party, being that the Knicks haven't won in my lifetime ever, right. it's or, gonna be the best I mean, party they've been, ever. They've been decent in my lifetime, but they haven't been great. So it's like. If they have a parade and I'm still in New York, I mean, I feel like I deserve it at this point. But if you move to Jersey, you still oh, want to parade? What am I gonna do? What am I gonna do in Jersey? I'm just saying, would you still move to the parade? Uh, if, if, would, I, would I still go to the parade? Yeah, yeah, because Jersey don't got a team no more. So, <laughs> so I mean, so I, I need a party somewhere. Right. So you go, you going to the Brooklyn Nets parade too? I mean, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I live in Queens, which means I'm just as close to Brooklyn as I am to to MSG. So you're going to be showing up in the LeBron James jersey, right? Uh, first of all, no, I'm not because um, his and here's a here's a funny thing. I know we're getting off topic here a little bit, but I spent 15 years disliking LeBron, not hating him, not wanting to be like, oh, LeBron sucks. I'm, I'm not, I'm not an idiot, like you know. But I spent 15 years not being a LeBron fan. Everybody was like, oh, LeBron. I'm like, listen, I need to see more than, you know, than what he's shown me for a long time before I jump on this bandwagon. So I spent all this time not liking LeBron and, of course, arguing with everybody that does on a consistent basis. And then he woke up one day and decided he wants to go on my team. So now... <laughs> Damn. I spent the last three years fighting my own arguments about LeBron to make cases for LeBron. So, <laughs> yeah, that's the story with that one. Right. <laughs> and so that's why I'm not going to show up in a LeBron jersey. So now we got, okay, so we, we already got the two, two, two other teams out of the way. Right. Hawks, you know, I, I got Hawks in six. Um, Steve got Hawks, got Knicks in six. And Quan? Knicks in six as well. Knicks in six as well. Okay, yeah. all right. And now here's my favorite series like I've been waiting for this like all season. My favorite series out of this whole you know first round, Bucks and Heat. That's gonna be my favorite series, and I'm hoping yeah. it will be a great one. Yeah, I can't wait. Who do you guys got? I love the Miami Heat. I love the organization. I'm not a Miami Heat fan, but I love the organization. I'm going Milwaukee in seven. Okay. Um, the Drew Holiday factor, um, PJ Tucker being there, DiVincenzo and um, Pat Collington growing up right before our eyes, right before our eyes. Chris Middleton, he's he has to show up, but he did when Giannis was out last year. Mm -hmm. Even though he gets on my nerve with these contested jumpers that he takes, but anyway, <laughs> anyway, but this this is this playoff might really be Giannis coming out party, so. I'm going Milwaukee in seven. Okay. Steve? I, I I definitely agree. I think that maybe they might take it in six. 
um, or five, actually. I, I think that the Bucks to me, are the biggest sleeper team in this playoffs because everyone's talking about, you know, the Lakers, and rightfully so, they're the defending champions. And, you know, you look at the Nets. The Nets are, you know, a three-headed monster. The 76ers are the number one seed. Miami's the upset darlings from last year. So everyone has a storyline for every team, but... You know, the team of the former back to back MVP, you know, defensive beast in, in Giannis Antetokounmpo, who I think is going to, like you said, have his final finally coming out to uh, coming out party. If you look at what he did at the end of the regular season, he started hitting some threes mm -hmm. uh, when they were matching up versus the Nets. He was taking that responsibility of, of taking Katie on, you know, by himself straight up. Giannis wants it. Giannis understands that now at this point in time. This is legacy for him. He can't keep going out early and, and people talking about him as being one of the greatest players in the game. So I think he shows up big. I think the Heat team hasn't been that good this season. And I think that they, they pull it off in the first round. They definitely beat the Heat. Okay. Um, what, six, seven? I, I would say I would say they probably do it in, in uh, five or six um, because, honestly, I mean, I, I'll put my little little shocker out there. I think that the the – the Bucks can beat the Nets, and I can't wait for that series. That's the series I want to see. That's going to be almost like a finals right there. That's true. That's true. Um, I'm having a hard time talking about the, the MVP for the last two years as a as coming out, as having a coming out party because, again, MVP for the last two years, defensive player of the year last year. I mean, the man has been balling. But for the last few years now, it's been in, I've seen Giannis' improvement. Giannis reminds me of Kawhi when he first came out. Like, you see you see the growth every single year. You know, you see the elevation, whether it's offensively. Like, you've seen how he's grown. So, and winning the last two MVPs, it's like, okay, the man can ball. But then, of course, you know, come, you know, losing early on. I, so that's why I'm, and the whole coming out thing, I'm guessing, like, I'm going to guess they're going to, I'm going to say they're going to come out, they're going to win, win the series. They're going to win the series, I'm going to say, in six games. Um, just because I think the Drew Holiday factor is a big one. Drew Holiday is going to be a difference maker for me because both on offense and defense and the fact that now they have a guy, you know, who could control the offense a little bit more than just handing the ball to Giannis and let everybody just stand around and wait for, for him to do something. So I think the fact that now Giannis can play off the ball a little bit more, I think that's going to be the difference maker. And having a guy like P.J. Tucker or, you know, shooters like Covington – I think, you know, even like Brooke Lopez, like, you know, having like guys who could spot up and shoot, but could also be, you know, pretty good defenders. I think that's going to be the difference maker. So I got the bus coming out, but Miami has, was underestimated all of last year through every series. They were underestimated. And I think, my, and one of my favorite guys in the league right now, I'm going to say one of my top five favorite guys in the league is Jimmy Butler. When it comes to competitors, he has no, he has no equal. That man will compete to his last breath. And he proved that last year in the finals. So that's why I'm going to give the Heat two games. But I think, yeah, I think you know, um, Milwaukee, you know, come out of this one. So now for the last series, you know, we got 76ers versus either Pacers or Wizards. I mean, do you feel like either one of those guys, one of those teams could give them, you know, like could give them, could give them like, let's just, let's just some trouble. I think it really depends on health. Um, Beal is going to be somewhat, you know, respectable and he's going to have somewhat of, of a hamstring. I'll give him a puncher's chance for the 76ers. If you ask me, the 76ers of the top three teams in the East are the weakest. If, there, if there's a team you're going to take down, it's going to be the 76ers. And both the Wizards and Pacers have been hot. I say more than likely no, but I think the Pacers have a better shot right now just because of the way Beal is. Okay. All right. You're okay, perfect. All right. You're back. You hear me? Yeah, yeah. All right, okay, yeah. So I'll I'll go I'll go. Yeah, the Pacers got a better chance than the Wizards. Like you said, the uh, Philly is just injuries to me. If Joel Embiid is not healthy, is <laughs> nothing you much you can do. And I got they got in my opinion the defensive player of the year on their team, Ben Simmons. Okay, but but at the end of the day, it's like if you if the team comes and goes as Joel Embiid, whatever he does, that's where the team going. As far as he going, that's where the team's going. So yeah, Indiana losing in five. I get. I, I I'll give them a a mercy. I'll give them a mercy one because a gentleman sweep. The bonus is liable to go. 
Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll give them a mercy game because Sabonis is liable to go for a triple double just off and just win a game. Yeah. Matter of fact, nah, I'm not giving that. Scratch that. Sweep them. Scratch that. Sweep them. Ah! Sweep them. Get them out of there. <laughs> get them out of there. Nah, nah, get them out of there. Man. Only if Joel Embiid get hurt, but get them out of there. And the reason I say sweep them, the defensive side of the ball, man, I think 76's defense is unstoppable. <laughs> like, like it's, it's a great defense. But also, you have to realize that Pacers also have one of the best defenders, you know, one of the best shot blockers and defenders in the league. So he's hurt. Yeah, he's, he's hurt, not going to be there. Okay. <laughs> so it's over. It's over. Like, I, like, I, 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 I said corrected. When I went that one, I was thinking about him, but I just thought about it. I was like, he's gone. I, ju- I just realized. I just realized that. You're right. He's hurt. <laughs> um, but you know what my problem with Embiid is? I have a problem with, like, with some of the big men in the league. Giannis is because he seems like, you know, he doesn't show up, you know, in the playoffs because, you know, his his normal game of, you know, running and you're stepping to, you know, dunk into the basket doesn't work in the playoffs because they basically, like, close it off and, you know, he has to shoot from outside. I feel like Embiid has a glass jaw. Like, he's – staying healthy is one thing, but also when he plays, someday, sometimes he plays like – it's like, dude, you're clearly the best player on the, in, in the court. Why are you not playing like it? And that's a problem with Embiid sometimes. I think that's also because of Ben Simmons. It's kind of hard because both of those guys were supposed to be like the alpha number one type player. And I feel like it became almost of like a who defers to who. And I think this season we've really clearly seen Ben Simmons is probably the number three option on that offense. Right. Like Tobias Harris is more of a key to that offense than Ben offensively, Simmons. Offensively, like you definitely, your Ben Simmons can be, you know, it can be your option one or two. Like, no, nope. because again, being that in, in in this league, this league is a shooter's league. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, guys, people who can shoot, that's who, that's who could dominate the league now. Mm-hmm. LeBron developed a jump shot in, in the last five years, like mm-hmm. a serious jump shot in the last five years, because he, mm-hmm. he realized that, hey, when guys can shoot from half court, I can't just sit here and, you know, lower my shoulder and drive to the basket all the time. Mm-hmm. And I think that's the problem that Giannis didn't figure out until, I guess, maybe this year or last year. Mm-hmm. Where it's like, so, and Embiid has the whole package. He could shoot from outside. He could get to the basket. He could play with. Like I feel like this problem is the fact that he just doesn't live up to it sometimes, right. and that's a problem because he is that good. So, but even so, um, whether to go against Pacers or Wizards, I got um, I got uh, Sixers in the gentleman sweep game, in five games either either way. So that's you know, that's my prediction for you know uh, as far as that goes. Now that we're done out east. Let's take it out west now. Sorry to interrupt. Just wanted to remind you, if you haven't done so already, to please subscribe to this channel and also hit the bell notification so you can be notified of future episodes. Also, make sure you like this video, comment your thoughts below, and share this video with your friends and family. Thank you so much. Now, back to the episode. Let's first start with the play-in game. We got Warriors and Wizards fighting for that last spot. Who gets it? I love John Morant. He from my he from my hometown. I love John Morant, but Steph Curry, the highest player in the NBA, there's no way, there's no way that the Grizzlies are beating the Warriors. I like Dylan Brooks' intensity. JJJ, he didn't have got his feet up under him yet. That's going to be a problem. But and Draymond Green playing some great defense because you see what he did to your boy Anthony Davis last night. So, <laughs> so, so I'm going Warriors. They they come and they they got to meet Utah. They got to meet with Utah um, on Sunday. Okay. Now I I agree with a lot of what you said on that. Like Steph Curry's the hottest player in basketball right now. Let's do the shooting lights out. Um, Draymond Green is playing in in insane defense and the way he played against Anthony Davis last night was a master class on how you actually play defense. Dylan Brooks last night though also showed up for the Memphis Grizzlies big in that game versus the San Antonio Spurs and John Morant I feel like is starting to really find his leggings. Um I really think that the Grizzlies are going to pull out an upset versus the Warriors because of the fact that the Warriors don't have a real second option behind Steph Curry. Like, if we were watching that game last night, in the first half, Toscano, Anderson, and Poole, and all these guys was hitting shots all over the place, and Wiggins was scoring. 
But how often does that happen? They had a 14-point lead in the first half, and they lost in the second half because they couldn't keep up with them. And if it's not Steph Curry scoring, who do you reliably count on to score for that Golden State Warriors offense? That's true. That's right. Nobody. That's true. No, listen, I've been waiting five years for Wiggins to have his breakout season. (laughs) <laughs> like five years I've been waiting now because every single time they're like, oh yeah, Wiggins, Wiggins. I'm like, yo, don't mention that guy to me. Hey, listen, I don't want to hear nothing about Wiggins waiting. until you know he actually proves it. So mm-hmm. that's why I'm like, listen, I don't want to hear nothing about Wiggins as a second option. Like even Kelly Uber as a second option was a, was a better choice. So I'm just like, mm-hmm. I don't want to hear nothing about Wiggins. If I'm Grizzlies, I'm keeping two guys with Steph Curry at all times. I mean, literally at all times. I don't care if Draymond hit 10 three pointers. I'm not, I'm not, or oh, somebody else hit another 10. I'm not taking two people off Steph Curry because I, Steph Curry is their do or die. That is how they win or lose the game. Okay. So that's why I'm like, for me, like, I don't understand. I truly don't understand how teams are like, you know, let Steph Curry go for 40. I get it. He isn't that great. And I'm a fan. Love Steph. Because again, the man changed the game. He makes, he makes basketball look fun. He runs around, runs around, get a quick shot, pull up. He makes battle basketball just beautiful. But if you're a coach, the you one thing that about happen. the one thing about Steph is he doesn't also do all his scoring on ball. This man is like running around like Reggie Miller and, and Rip I Hamilton, know. where he's like, Hey, you you may be trying to you know double team me, but I'm gonna run up three screens, come around, catch, throw it to my guy, catch it back, and shoot it. And but one guy saying. that I want to see on him is Dylan Brooks. Dylan Brooks is a ferocious defender, and he may not be able to mm-hmm. stop him. But if you put Dylan Brooks on him and just slow him down enough that you can play one on one versus everybody else, you might be able to eat this out. Because last night that man was going crazy. I know, and that's yeah, the Marlboro. Yeah, <laughs> and, 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 and and that's my thing, and that's my thing with um, you know, with Steph, and that's what I'm saying as a coach. What I would do is I don't care what two guys it is. I just need two guys, two bodies on him, two bodies at all times. I don't care if it's you know if it's like you know. The point guard in the center, the shooting guard. I don't care who it is. I just need two bodies on him. Wherever he goes, I need two people right. need to be directly on him. That's what I'm saying. But if you, if you ask me, I said, um, I call, I, I'm going with the upset. I'm going to go with Grizzlies. He's going to pull it off. Just because I think, I think you know, somebody's going to be like, dude, like you see what Steph Curry did? Like Steph Curry had what, 35 last night? Like, again, 37. 37. Keep, yo, keep two bodies on him and slow him down just enough. Listen, let him have 20. As opposed to 37. Because so Steph Curry have 20, the Warriors are not winning. Why? Because there's nobody else to give them another reliable, you know, 20 points, 20, 30 points a game. So I'm going to go with the upset and go with Grizzlies. But again, realistically, I want more Warriors basketball. So I would want the Warriors, but I'm going to go with the upset on this one. So okay. we got, all right, so we're going Warriors, Warriors, um, Grizzlies. Warriors, Grizzlies, Grizzlies. Okay. Um, now, for the first round matchup, um, let's start with, with Denver and Portland. I think that's going to be a really tough matchup, but I think that, you know what? Denver is going to just pull it out. I think that in the last matchup they had on the final game of the regular season, the Blazers did beat them by 20 points, which can make you kind of feel a little bit shaky. There's no Jamal Murray for the Nuggets, but Jokic is that dude, and Kevin Porter, uh, Kevin Porter Jr. has just been insane. Um, he's just been, or Michael Porter Jr. Oh, Michael Porter Jr. Yeah, yeah. Porter. I get the juniors confused. Um, <laughs> Michael Michael Porter Jr. has been absolutely a walking bucket, and he's shooting over fifty percent. He's knocking down threes. He's looking like the rant light, like we all thought he would be. And if he's playing like that between him and Jokic, it's a wrap. Um, I I want to go Denver. Because I like, but I'll I'll never really doubt Dame Lillard, bro. Dame Lillard. Yo, that's a <laughs> problem, though. The, the reason the reason that I might go against Portland because of the injury problems that they have been, you know, had everybody a lot healthier now. But ah, this was a rough one for me. This is like that, you know, that 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 Bucks Miami series. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with the, my MVP. I'm going with Jokic. Okay. Yeah, I'm going with Jokic. He can he can he can pass you in and out of a game. He can pass okay. you into a game. So yeah. like, I I'm gonna go Jokic. I'm gonna go Denver and let's go seven. I'm gonna go Denver and seven. Do you think it's gonna be go seven games? I think you're gonna go seven games because I 
I still can't go against Dame Lillard, man. Dame Lillard is a problem. Like, I agree with you. I <laughs> that's agree. a big problem. But the defensive side of the ball for the Nuggets, now you instead of having Jamal Murray, you have this utility um, belt is in Will Barton. He's a utility guy. So he can do everything. He's a Swiss Army knife. Yeah. He, if you dunked, he can guard. He can do all this other stuff. And I'm not even talking about Aaron Gordon. Who's stopping Aaron Gordon? With Jokic passing the ball. Like, that's an issue mm-hmm. <laughs> for Portland because their defense is pretty – Aaron Gordon, Aaron Gordon was a really good pickup for them. It was a really good pickup, you know, especially, you know, now that, you know, Murray went down, it was a really good pickup for them. Right. Yeah. I, I also think that, like, the way they use Jokic in, in Denver is, like, everything that you wish that the 76ers did with Embiid. Mm-hmm. It's like they let Jokic be Thank the you. focal point of that offense. Mm-hmm. He creates for people. They run it through him. Like, if the Sixers did that with Embiid, I think they'd be so much better off. I don't, I don't know how old you guys is, but Jokic played like Bill Walton did when he played on the Blazers. I don't know, like, you know, all the real basketball guys. I'm not a real I, basketball I, guy. No, I know. I do. Um, <laughs> even for the games I miss, I go back and watch them during the off-seasons. Right. <laughs> I have to do a whole season. We know, we, know, we, know, we know sports, you know, would kill me. So I go back and watch all these old games because, again, I hear about all these guys, you know, who played in the 70s and 80s who were so great. I'm like, you know what? I want to see some of these games. And, mm-hmm. yeah. Guys, you know, certain guys don't disappoint. Right. Um, all right, so you got Denver. You, you got Denver and mm-hmm. six. Mm-hmm. Both of you guys got, got Denver and six. Yeah, I, I'm going I'm, I'm going seven because Dame Lillard. Seven. I'm going seven. Um, I've been waiting for, like, Dame Lillard, I know he could show up, especially in the playoffs. I know he'll show up. I know he'll do what he, what he does. But I've been waiting for Portland to stop being the team who make the playoffs and get knocked out in the first or second round. Mm-hmm. I've been waiting for them to, you know, to just like one of these years, just, you know, elevate, like just go beyond, like we know it. You're going to make the playoff. You're going to be, a, you're going to be a tough out for whoever you play. But I'm like, I'm, I've been waiting for them to get to that point, but I feel like had it been maybe a different team, I would have given them a better shot, but I feel like Denver has got it, gotten it figured out. They, they have an identity. They know what's happening at all times. Mm-hmm. They know like, you know, we're down five. There's like a minute and a half left. Let's give it to Jokic. Let him be the decision maker. They know, like they know where this guy, their pieces are gonna be. I feel like Denver is is more of a solid, solid team altogether than Portland because Portland on any given night, you're not sure what you're gonna get out of them. Sometimes, right. you know, like you know what you can get from from you know from Dame, from CJ, but then you know other some other guys are you know or what, what do you call it? Um, it's like you know it's like hit and miss. Right. Sometimes, you know, Nurkic, for example, is, you know, another guy who's, like, hit and miss. We, we were wait, we've been waiting for Nurkic to become, you know, to be that guy. Mm-hmm. And, it, I mean, I understand injuries, but it just hasn't happened. So, it's like, I've been waiting for Portland to, you know, to just kick in the extra gear and, you know, and, and make it. But I think Denver's going to be too much problem for them. Like, they're very, you know, they play very well together and very cohesive. So, I'm going to go Denver in six. Okay. I think, you know, that's. I, I, I can't give them the upset. Um, next matchup, we got whew, rematch from last year. Dallas Clippers. <laughs> Oof. <laughs> Oof. <laughs> Oof. Mm, I'll, right? I'll, be, I'll, be, I'll be honest with you. Spicy. I, I, I'm expecting playoff P to finally show up and earn that, that name. I think that the Clippers have so much to prove. And they put themselves in a position now where where it's put up or shut up. Because honestly, if you don't win in in this series in the first round, what the hell are you guys doing anyway? You can like this this Mavs team. They're they're good. They're not great. You know, KP is, is hit or miss. When he's hot, he's hot. When he's not, he's not. Luca is all time. But you know what? You got PG. You got Kawhi. There's a lot of talk about them coming to take over the Lakers town. And you can't be talking all that nonsense if you're not going to deliver. So, you know what? It's time for them to deliver. And I think this is the year. I think they beat him in six. And I think that this is the year that the Clippers actually um, do some work. Okay. So so I was telling y'all how much I hate the Lakers and how much I hate the Knicks. Mm-hmm. This has been my spirit animal for the past two years, <laughs> the Clippers. The Clippers? <laughs> and, and and I was very disappointed last year. I, I, I'm a big Paul George fan. I'm a big Kawhi fan because I like two-way players. I'm a big fan of two-way players, like big fan, especially two-way wing players. Mm-hmm. And they disappointed me also bad last year with Denver. But anyway, 
going into this game, they're also the Clippers. Also the Clippers. <laughs> so I'm I'm hopeful that you know the Paul George thing happens. I'm hopeful. I'm like you know let's revert back to Indiana. I'm hopeful. I got the Clippers winning in six against Dallas. Okay. Um. Uh. Yeah. I, I got the Clippers winning in six games because they're gonna be rough and tough. But this is the this is my caveat for the Clippers in the playoffs. So this is my whole caveat. Mm-hmm. Rondo hasn't missed his eight weeks of the season yet. Okay. You know Rondo is always slotted for eight weeks missing from an injury. <laughs> Every year. It, it never fails. Them eight weeks going to come during the playoffs. All right. Go ahead. <laughs> okay. Um, the Clippers have always been the Clippers to me. And as a Lakers fan, I have never taken them seriously. Ever. Like, even during their years of Lab City of, you know, oh, yeah, you know, I remember somebody put a meme online where um, I think during one of their games, they had, like, pictures of, like, Blake Griffin, um, DeAndre Jordan, Chris Paul hanging in the rafters, just pictures of them. And somebody says, of course, it's the Clippers. Lakers hang championship banners. They hang up selfies. So, you know, <laughs> <laughs> you can't. T- <laughs> so I've never taken them seriously. And when they got my favorite guy, Kawhi, Kawhi is my guy. I love Kawhi. So when they got him, I was like, finally, they got to do something. Mm-hmm. But man, oh man, as much as I love Kawhi, Kawhi, I have a problem with Kawhi. Kawhi is a mercenary. Mm-hmm. He plays like a mercenary. He plays like, listen, I have a job to do. I'm going to come here, do the job, and go home. Like, he treats basketball like we, like, you know, he's, like, he has to clock in and clock out. He treats basketball the way most people treat their jobs. Like, he right. shows up, do it, walk away. Like, I understand the no emotion thing. It's one thing. But, man, I feel like he needs to, like, lead the team. When they, we, listen, you're down by five. As you know, there's 45 seconds left on the clock. I need you to pump the team. I need you to give one of those Captain America speeches. Like, do something. <laughs> like, I'm like, mm. you can't just sit there, like, go out there. You like, no, I want more. So because of that, that's been my problem with you know, with, you know, with Kawhi. As much as I love him, I'm like, you can't be a mercenary, dude. This is your team. But that's the beauty of getting Rondo. Like, that's what Rondo does. Like, you know what I mean? Like, Rondo's gonna be that guy where it's like, okay, Kawhi leads by example. But Rondo's going to go out there and chew everybody out. He's going to make sure everybody's on the same page. And I think that's the biggest the biggest thing that scares me about the Lakers is that they don't have Rondo anymore. Because when LeBron wasn't the, the, the leader or, or on the floor, Rondo was very much taking charge. And he was very instrumental in that, in that big um, you know, championship run that they had. I think that Rondo is severely underrated. Oh, no, no. I, I agree with you in terms of Rondo. I think Rondo is one of the best, like, PGs, you know, point guards we've ever seen in the league because, again, he's more than just, you know, he, he's not a mercenary. He's a, he's a floor general. He's a leader. He mm-hmm. will sit there and, you know, like, he will gather the troops. He will give you mm-hmm. that Captain America speech. I mean, you know, I, I talk about Exactly. Like, <laughs> he, he will give you that. <laughs> so I think that's definitely a difference maker for the Clippers this year. But um, I think it comes down to, like, we know what Kawhi is going to do. We know what Rondo can do, and we know what the other pieces could do. I think it comes down to pandemic Pete. It comes down to <laughs> yeah. it comes down to him because if he if he decides to show up, I think that's going to be the difference maker. And if he decides to you know have one of those have what he, whatever happened last year, then Clippers that's as far as they go. But I'm like because the Mavs are not like you say KP is inconsistent, Luca's Luca, but everybody else on the team is inconsistent. That's why I'm gonna give it to Clippers. I feel like. They have just, they have enough to get past Mavericks with no problem, right. like you know. So I'm you know of course I give. I think also they shouldn't like it shouldn't be go to six or seven games. I think they you know Clippers need to make a statement, knock yeah. him out in four or five games, knock him out. Make make sure you let the, let people know like hey listen, nah we're not you're not doing the same Clippers from last year. This is a new team. <laughs> like I need you to show like you know show it prove it. Come there you know come out swinging. So because of that I, I got Clippers in five. Because I need them, I need them to show up. So, because I, uh, I, I know some Clippers fan, I, oh, of course, there's only like three Clippers fan, but you know, I know some Clippers fan, and I've been waiting, and they've been talking all season. And like I told them, I don't hear nothing from you until the playoffs start, because you know, you you, you have a habit of not showing up in the playoffs. So, right. Right. so I got Clippers on this one. Next matchup, so we next matchup we got Lakers and Suns. 
That I think that's gonna be. I think that might be the best series. You know, um, Le- Lakers and Suns. Le- um, Quan, Le- let's start with you. Lakers. I, I know you hate the Lakers, but no. Listen, I, I hate the organization. I love the players. Okay, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> the organization did a lot of shit. Uh, let's not get into that. We talk about that on a, on another uh, episode. <laughs> okay, Lake Show and Six. Um, Phoenix, Phoenix need the experience. Phoenix need the experience of being in the playoff series. So I don't see them winning against the Lakers right now. I don't see that happening. Chris Paul is a traditional point guard. History shows traditional point guards do not win. Hmm. <laughs> when you think about it, history shows traditional point guards would not win. That's why I wanted to be in last week, last time, episode from yesterday. You know what I'm saying? But history shows traditional point guards do not win. He's a great player. He motivates the team to get better, you know, throughout the season. But when it comes to the playoffs, it's hard for me to go against go if I got Chris Paul and LeBron. It's hard for me to go against LeBron compared to Chris Paul. Okay, that's all. Then I have. I have hold on, hold on. See, before you go, before you go, you gotta completely ignore the fact that Booker is one of the best scorers the league has seen in recent years. Oh. We're gonna ignore Booker. We're gonna ignore Aiton. Just want to make sure we're on the same page. <laughs> Go ahead, Steve. So, so what do you define as a traditional point guard? Like, was Kyle Lowry not a traditional point guard when he was winning the championships with the, with the Raptors, or was Tony Parker not like a traditional point guard when he was? Oh, we gonna give. Oh, no, I don't want to cut you off, but are we gonna give Kyle Lowry like props for for, for that championship? Yo, Kyle, Kyle Lowry, Lowry was big. No, he, he was he was a good supplemental player. But think about it like this: Kawhi probably went on one of the greatest runs of True, all. But time. let's not let's not hate on Lowry. He came up big in some of these games that they. He did. Yeah, but think about it but like this. What? But you but, know what? It's easy for Kyle Lowry to do that. For example, okay, I'm gonna make, I'm gonna make a, a a Marvel reference here. It's easy for Hawkeye to you know to, to get an arrow to you know hit you with an arrow in the back when you're not paying attention to him. It's easy for you know because of course you worry about you worry about Hulk and you know and, and Thor in front of you. It's easy for Hawkeye to get shot in. That's I how mean, that's what Kyle Lowry did, okay? Nobody, nobody was paying attention to Kyle Lowry. Oh, shit. No, no, what about but he's Kyle still Lowry a traditional point guard running the show. I, no, I'm just saying, normally, history yeah. shows this. Like John Scott, no. the traditionalist of the traditional Cha- point guard. Chauncey Billups. Is not but he's not traditional. His name is Mr. Big Shot. It's not Mr. Pass the Ball. Like, All right, so, so then how about this? So then you could say that. Chris Paul is a mix of a traditional point guard and a new age point guard because unlike the traditional point guard, he can get his own shot. He, he can. can. He can but, shoot 50% from the field and score 20 points. But his problem is this. This is his problem. The mid-range shots, he take too many of those shots compared to the three-point shot. Okay. So I, I, he, I, can, I can agree with you on that. But with having, like, like, like he's saying, one of the best shooters in the game and, and a guy like Book – him operating in that mid range may open up some of those three pointers to book, and you know it'll be on the path for the Suns to win in seven as they beat the Lakers in the first round. Because <laughs> let's just face it, Chris Paul is going to come the ball. <laughs> <laughs> wait, 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 wait! He put his prediction in that too. That was fire. That was hard. <laughs> no, but I'm still no news to this one. <laughs> I expected no less from a Knicks fan when you over here telling me that Chris Paul and Devin Booker is gonna be the, you know it's gonna be it's gonna be you know it's gonna be the Lakers. It's DeAndre Ayton. You said it yourself. We got Bridges, bro. We got Cam Johnson. We going crazy out here. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, the experience won't take Wake them out. Me up when you're done. <laughs> listen, listen. They won't sweep them, but in seven they're gonna take it. Okay. Really? Mm-hmm. The Lakers are one of the best defensive team in the league. The best defensive team in the league. <laughs> well, well, let let's see one. How long Anthony Davis lasts? He's 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 going knocking into to 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 scoreboards and having back spasms and missing the end of the regular season. Listen. You got LeBron James who's been hobbled, and then who's your third option? Last night everyone was telling me shooters a bucket, shooters this, shooter can't guard nobody. Shooter couldn't even be on that court last night. You leave Shooter in there, he's barbecue chicken. Mm. He's a turnstile. You're going straight to the bucket. So when the Laker fans are telling me how good they are, Schroeder going to get eight up by CP3. He's going to take his lunch. 
And he's going to eat it in front of LeBron and say, sorry, bro. See you next year. Get on the banana boat. You know what I mean? I'm good. I'm going to tell you right now. I'm going to tell you right now. I, I don't disagree with some of the things you say. Sorry to interrupt again, but just wanted to remind you, if you haven't done so earlier, to please subscribe to this channel and also hit the bell notification to be notified of future episodes. Also, make sure you like the video, comment your thoughts below, and share this with your friends and family. I'm just trying to help this page grow, so your support is greatly appreciated. Now, back to the episode. Although some of them are blasphemous, because you're over there talking <laughs> about, you know, you're talking about, you know, Aiden and Booker over L.A. Like, that's blasphemous. But again, you're a Knicks fan, you know. I, you know, you, 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 we, we don't expect nothing. We don't expect <laughs> nothing. <laughs> <laughs> nothing we, 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 listen, that's like reasoning Aiden, could come, coming from a Knicks fan. But <laughs> if Aiden is the number three player for the Suns, who's the number three player for, 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 for the Lakers? That's the thing with the Lakers, though. Like, I, I, in all seriousness, that's the thing with the Lakers. Because of the, because of the way the team is built, they don't have one guy who's like your number three. They don't have the guy who's like, oh, yeah, I'm your number three guy. Yeah. What they do is what they have is like on any given night, when you're not paying attention, Kuzma will give you 15 or 20. Um, Shura oh, well, will oh. give you 15 or 20. Oh, like, oh. what you call it? Um, Caldwell Pop will give you 15 off of like four threes. Like, yeah. what you call it? Uh, what's what, 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 Caruso. Caruso. Huh, Caruso will give you 12. Like, <laughs> what you call it? Um, Harold could come off the bench and give you a double double off the bench. Like, so it's like on any given night, you don't know who's gonna come out and you know who's gonna come out and give you a problem because you because you're so worried about LeBron and AD. And again, AD has had a glass jaw all season. Man, that man, you. But at the same time, come playoff time, and I think that's the difference. I think that's the difference with AD last year, or in, as opposed to when he was in in New Orleans, like. Before he you know, oh my back hurts. I'm gonna go ahead and, and, and sit out. Now you play. Listen, now you're not playing for for a playoff spot. Now you're not playing for you know you're not you're not in New Orleans where you have the expectation. You're in LA. You there? And, the, the, you, you listen, Lakers. There's always expectation. The moment the Lakers get in a playoff, expectation is you know championship or bust because that's the that's the that's the standard. That's what we've we've gotten used to. So now if you're having a bad, you listen. If you're struggling, your back hurts. Good. Let it hurt after the game. So <laughs> listen, so it's like listen. After the game, you can get ice, massage, get injection. I don't care what you get. But for this game, we need you to be in there. Right. So what I am concerned about AD's health, I do think once they get in the playoff, once you once they realize that, listen, this is do or die. You can't just sit, you can't sit out a game. You can't miss a game because your thigh hurts. Oh, a thigh bruise. It's like, yo, no, those are not real things. Those are not real injuries. I don't want to hear it. <laughs> so Lakers in six. I, I would say Lakers in five, but I'm going to be generous here. Oof. Listen. I, I'm, a, I, listen, I'm generous. I'm gonna give him two games because mm -hmm. I respect CP, and I, I respect CP because again, that man had the Oklahoma City team, you know, in the in the, in the playoff on the fifth as a fifth seed right. when they when they didn't belong there. Right. Okay. That Oklahoma City team was like, dude, like dude, you're a lottery team at best, <laughs> and that man had them in, in the fifth seed in, in the West. So I respect CP enough. I'm gonna give him two games because of that. But other than that, no, we, we, right. we're, not, we're not we're not gonna go ahead and say you know. Devin Booker and you know and CP3 and Aiton is gonna be the one that beat LeBron. No, so, so <laughs> no. let's go like this then. This whole mythical cast that the Lakers have after AD and LeBron, they were so good that when LeBron and AD were gone, they couldn't even maintain any kind of scene. They went from the first seed all the way to the eighth seed. They were slipping and sliding like this was, you know, a water park. Then the next thing that we have to factor in with this, it sounds like we built a whole bunch of excuses in for when one player doesn't show up and deliver in that three spot for them. Like, well, this guy was supposed to be there and that guy. Talon Horton Tucker couldn't make it on the court last night. You had to depend a lot on Wesley Matthews because they had nobody that could guard on the perimeter versus Steph Curry. And let's face it, these Warriors are banged up and barely made it to the point that they made it at so let's just face it they went toe to toe down to the wire versus a warriors team that only has steph curry now you're telling me we got steph curry devin booker miles bridges is better than every single one of these third players for the lakers miles bridges is a good player and there's no way you're going to tell me that kyle kuzma is going to be able to stop him because kyle kuzma can't stop nothing like I said, I'm a, I'm a big fan of Miles Bridges. I'm, I'm with you on the Miles Bridges train. Even the Cam Johnson train, they wing defenders. I told y'all that's a preference in the league. But the experience of LeBron and AD over the experience of just one Chris Paul, I'm taking LeBron and AD, bro. 
again, for me, it's not just for me. Like, you see, I'm not even going to go LeBron and AD. I'm going to say LeBron. Because LeBron, as much as, again, as all the problems we've had with him, I've had with him, you know, personally, like, you know, in terms of, like, not personally, but, like, you know, as, as a player, all the problems I've had with him is the fact that when the game matters, in recent years, when it matters, he has shown up. He has shown up, and he knows how to win. Some days it's, you know, it's lowering his shoulder and driving to the basket. Some days it's pulling up a shot like he did last night. You know, like, so it's like, so he knows how to win. And I think when it comes down to it, um, you know how, um, like LeBron mentioned in his, spe- you know, in, in his post-game um, speech yesterday, especially, you know, he was mentioned like, everybody got a plan. Like Mike Tyson said, everybody got a plan until you get punched in the mouth. And I think that's what happens to the Lakers. I think that game last night woke them up. Right. I think, you know, like having the Warriors, like, you know, you know almost like, Taking them out, I think that woke them up because it's like, whoa! Just so you know, you're not invincible. On mm-hmm. any given night, you're not gonna sit here out there and outscore everybody, everything by forty. So I think that's the wake up call they needed, and that's why I think you know, like again, I respect CP. I'm giving him two games, but I don't see the see um the Suns pulling it out, and not only you know, not only like out playing, but out coaching and just like out playing the Lakers and win that series. That's that's what I'm gonna go for. So when they win, I'm gonna come back and we can have this conversation again. <laughs> um, <laughs> lose, don't worry, I'm a bookmarker. I'm like I told you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So the last series is Jazz versus. Y'all got Grizzlies. I got the Warriors. Y- okay. So yep, I Jazz Grizzlies. versus. Okay. You got Warriors, right? So uh, let's go Jazz versus Warriors. If it's Jazz versus Warriors, I'm giving Steph Curry. I'm giving Steph Curry. One game. I'm sorry. <laughs> Jazz. Well, barring Donovan Mitchell's health, because we don't know where he at right now. Mm-hmm. So Donovan Mitchell, we don't know where he at now. If Donovan, if Donovan Mitchell playing, Jazz in six. I'm going to go two games. If Donovan Mitchell not playing, Jazz in seven. I think Jazz win versus either one of them in six. Okay. Um, no, actually, probably five. I gentlemen sweep them, because honestly, this Jazz team – it's been one of the most underrated teams in the NBA. They have everything. They're deep. Mike Conley's still there balling out. You know, um, what is it? Gold Bear, you know, for all the talk about, you know, all these great defensive players, he's up there as one of the top three play- defensive players in the game. Mm-hmm. I think that's just going to be a difference maker versus either one of those teams because, let's face it, with the Grizzlies, you're going to want Valanciunas to dominate in the paint, and he's not going to do that versus Gold Bear. And versus the, the the Golden State Warriors, they don't have anyone that can match no. up with him, and he's just going to kill the boards. He'll get, like, 30 boards a game. Right. Right. Okay. All right. So, um... Again, I got a gentleman sweep on either team. Po- a possible sweep if it's the Grizzlies. Mm-hmm. Because um, like Steve said, I think you put um you put Gobert in the paint. He's not the greatest offensive player, but if he doesn't have to create his own shots and he's and he's in the paint, I think you know he he's gonna give you enough for that. And Donovan Mitchell, w- like you said, with his health, I say I say if the Grizzlies play this, I mean if the uh, Jazz play this series without Jonathan Donovan Mitchell, let's say this how you know let him rest for the next round. I still think they, they pulled this out in like five or six games. Okay. Because I still think because I think they are that deep, they are that good that I don't see you know Grizzlies, you know, being able to you know to stay stay with them. So even you know, even with you know with, with, with Donovan Mitchell's health being in question, I still think Jazz pulled this out in five games. If Mitchell's if Mitchell comes out playing, you know, playing like like he like like we know he can, sweep. it's a sweep. It's a clean sweep, like it's an easy. Easy matchup for them, and you know, and that will come. You know, yeah, that's that's what I mean. That's what it is for me. So, so now, so as of right now, it seems like you guys got Clippers coming out, Jazz, um, Denver, and you say you got the Suns. Who said you got the Suns? Right here, oh, you got the Suns. Suns all day. They gonna wash them Lakers. <laughs> okay, okay. Now back to reality. Do you actually believe that? Oh yeah. Really? CP3 is one of the most underrated players in NBA history. We can't say CP3 is underrated when we've all acknowledged that CP3 is clearly like a difference maker wherever he goes and he's clearly he's clearly underrated if no one's giving him a shot in this series. Oh no, we're giving him a shot. We give him two games. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How much more do you want? I'm 
I'm saying they're winning in seven. This is a seven game series either way. Seven game series. Who's yeah, gonna sit there and play around with seven games with this team? Like, based on no, the, the, the Suns are the two seed. Like, we acting like the Suns is some scrubs. They're the two seed. They're one of the best teams in the league right now. And like we said, they're deep with wing defenders, you, 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 which is gonna you know, make you know, it you know a who problem else? out here. You know who else was a two seed? The Rockets the last five years. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I mean, yeah. listen, CP3 is a bad boy. He yeah, gonna, at he one point, he was in that right. same Rockets team. That was, a, you know, that, that bad team that, you know, he was in that team too. The Rockets, that was two seed. Yo, tell, tell, me how, tell me how good Booker is at scoring again. He's one of the generational talents in this game right now. Uh, but you're going generational? You, you say all this, but you're going against the greatest of this generation. Like, it's not yeah. you. <laughs> but, I give you that. I give you that. But this man is on one ankle. He's on one ankle. Okay, you know what? Let's, face it. Let's face it. Let's face it. LeBron on one ankle is better than everybody in Seattle Phoenix. <laughs> Chris Paul does not approve of that statement. Chris Paul does not approve of that statement. And Chris oh, Paul can Chris Paul can sit down and, and you know and go to the Bahamas and drink and, and have you know drink martinis on the beach and think about it. Listen, he can, he can when, feel whatever he feels about when, it, but when, when LeBron Chris, on one ankle is better than everybody on that team. When, when right. Chris Paul gets this dub, ooh wee, LeBron gonna be sending you those pictures on Instagram like sorry, y'all, but these daiquiris are good. <laughs> <laughs> all right everyone thank you for joining us on sports table talk and there you have it uh let me know what you think in the comments what did you agree with what did you disagree with send us your thoughts and we'll see you next time for you know whatever we discuss next thank you for joining us until next time take care Thanks for watching Sports Table Talk. If you enjoyed what you just watched, please check out the other shows on this channel, which include The Bait Boss, Open Table Discussions, Table Advice, and Table of Cinema. And last but not least, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Make sure you like the video, comment below, and share with your friends and family. Thanks for your support.